welcome back everyone in today's lecture we are going to discuss what happens when a dynamic system undergoes free vibration so in the previous lectures we have seen that when a structure is subject to dynamic load then we learned how to set up the equation of motion now in subsequent classes including today we are going to looking up or we are going to be discussing some special cases that can be analytically solved okay and we are going to start with the simplest case of dynamic loading which would be free vibration in which case a structure is basically assigned some initial condition like displacement and velocity and it is allowed to let vibrate without any external force acting on it okay all right so let us get started till the lectures that we have uh, done so far we saw that how to set up basically the equation of motion of a uh, system under uh, action of an external force okay and we derive that uh, the equation of motion can be written as fi plus ft plus fs and that should be equal to the applied force and for linear system we saw that we could write it as mu double dot then cu dot and then ku should be equal to p of t okay so in, in, in up to the last chapter our focus was to derive or to finally come up with an equation of motion which is of this form for a different type of system okay so we had different system under the action of a uh, external load and we saw that how to derive this equation of motion now what uh, we are going to do we are going to study special cases of uh, this equation of motion for different type of uh, vibration okay now depending upon uh, what is the external load and what my system comprise of uh, we are going to deal each of uh, we are going to discuss about each of these systems one by one and then see what are the application of those type of uh, uh, systems and then uh, how do we actually uh, or like you know how do we physically interpret those systems okay so if you look at these equation of this equation of motion we basically have three components okay now depending on whether we have a value of damping okay zero or non zero and what is our force of excitation okay based on these two important parameters we are going to discuss different properties of a dynamic system okay so for example let me characterize what happens for each of these cases so in general we saw that we had equation of motion okay now we draw something like this then when damping is zero okay so when damping is zero we had free or let us say uh, let us start with that when the applied force is equal to zero so pt is equal to zero in this case then we will have what is something called, called as free vibration okay so this is free vibration and under this free vibration depending upon whether my system is has a zero or non-zero value of damping okay we can either have undamped free vibration or damped free vibration okay so again we are going to characterize between undamped free vibration or damped free vibration so remember that this was for pt equal to applied force equal to zero this is c equal to zero okay and this is c not equal to zero okay so this is the one categorization uh, one tree branch in the other uh, part we have uh, what we are going to discuss uh, not a zero value of applied force but a non-zero value 
in that case uh, we are going to discuss some specific cases for example uh, what we are going to start uh, with uh, if we have non zero value of uh, non zero value of the applied force we'll have forced vibration okay and depending upon the nature of uh, uh, forcing function okay we going to study a few specific cases and then few generalized cases so we can have like you know harmonic motion so when i say harmonic i mean something of uh, uh, you know i mean uh, something similar to some, some something combination of sine and cos okay and then uh, we could have a non harmonic motion okay so uh, we are going to uh, say let us say non harmonic motions so we could have let us say so this one would be like you know something like sin cos etc okay non harmonic could be like you know something like step functions or like you know pulse excitations or things like that and then we'll have random excitation okay and in random excitation we have uh, let us say earthquake excitation or seismic excitation okay so depending upon what is the nature of the forcing function we are going to study all these topics and then of course like you know in each of these topics uh, we are again going to study you know damped and undamped okay so again we'll have damped and undamped and uh, we are also going to discuss that how we are actually going to uh, obtain the response of those system for example if you have a uh, harmonic excitation uh, like you know, it is feasible to obtain an analytical solution or a mathematical solution which is a closed form solution for non harmonic cases if uh, for very few specific cases we would be able to obtain analytical solutions okay uh for random excitation it is not possible uh, the like you know because the excitation cannot be represented as a simple like you know i mean uh, uh, combination of functions that are uh, amenable for mathematical uh, solution so in that case we are going to study how do we obtain uh, solution using numerical uh, methods okay so we are going to study that as well okay now today what we are going to do okay we are going to focus on this pre vibration okay what we are going to focus on this case today as pre vibration okay now as i said what do you mean by free vibration okay pre vibration happens when you basically uh, imparts an initial velocity or displacement uh, to a system and let it vibrate without any action of external load okay so basically in short okay basically in short what we will have as pt equal to 0 all right so this is the condition for free vibration without any uh, action of external load uh, we let it vibrate freely okay uh, and uh, we will see that uh, for this type of system we could have either undamped free vibration okay or we could have uh, damped uh, vibration and we are going to study both of these today okay now the question becomes that uh, you know how do we impart or initiate free vibration okay so one of the ways to do that because we just said that there is no external force the question like you know, how does the motion start so p to start a free vibration we impart either initial displacement to the system okay so it would be either initial displacement of the system or initial velocity okay so initial displacement means uh, u0 or initial uh, velocity uh, would mean u dot 0 and like you know i mean uh, you can see there are a lot of example for uh, this type of system for example 
if you uh, take a pendulum and then you uh, lift it or if we provide initial angular displacement of let us say a uh, theta naught all right and let it vibrate okay then it would go under the action of uh, it would basically undergo free vibration okay so that is uh, one example uh, there are other examples uh, as well uh, for example initial velocity would be something uh, you know i mean you take a hammer and then uh, you hit something let us say an elastic system with that hammer okay and then uh, that would be uh, basically imparting initial velocity uh, because in that case the hammer imparts a lot of force in a very small amount of time so it does not have time to react so it won't have initial displacement as such but because of the high, uh, like a you know, large force in a short duration of time it would acquire initial velocity and we we're going to discuss that like you know that is called impulse and how do we impart that okay so these are the two uh, conditions through which we can initiate free vibration in a system all right now these type of uh, system or these type of motion free vibration as i said uh, because it is uh, without uh, action of any external load okay uh, this type of system can be utilized or this kind of motion can be utilized to obtain basically uh, important parameters of a uh, oscillatory motion okay for example uh, so let me just write it here to obtain important parameters and two important parameters okay and we can we can do that uh, you know experimentally so two important parameters are basically what is the and we are going to define that what is the natural frequency okay and what is the damping ratio okay so these two parameters can be uh, obtained using the free vibration of a system okay uh, so it is like you know it becomes uh, very imperative that we obtain analytical solution for the free vibration of a uh, system okay so the first thing that we are going to uh, uh, do in this chapter would be untamped free vibration and then we are going to go to and discuss uh, the damped free vibration okay so uh, first thing we are going to discuss is undamped free vibration so remember this is a free vibration and this is undamped so free vibration means pt is equal to 0 undamped means c is equal to 0 okay so basically our equation of motion becomes what if you substitute these two equation of motion i basically get this okay with of course we need as i said we need to have uh, an initial condition otherwise if you solve this differential equation without an initial condition you would get a trivial solution okay so the initial condition a non zero it need to be a non zero initial condition either uh, what should no sorry or uh, what should be the values of u of 0 and u dot of 0 and one of them must be non zero to initiate the uh, free vibration okay so these two conditions need to be utilized all right so what we are going to do First, we are going to solve this system and obtain the analytical solution for u of t okay and then we are going to get into the physical interpretation of the response for the free vibration so uh, solution to a second order uh, linear uh, homogeneous uh, differential equation remember that we now don't have any term on the right hand uh, side of this equality uh, so we discussed that uh, you know the how to get the solution of a homogeneous uh, differential equation basically uh, let me write my uh, general solution u of t as e to the power lambda t and then we are going to substitute it back to the original equation so that i get after substitution plus a and that should be equal to 0 okay now e to the power lambda t uh, term uh, would never be 0 it won't give me any feasible solution 
so the only thing that can be zero is what i have in the brackets here and uh, that uh, gives me the value of the lambda so there would be two roots of this equation so the quadratic equation it would be plus minus under root minus k by m okay which i can uh, write as uh, under root k by m where i represent under root uh, of uh, uh, minus one as uh, the complex number i okay and this is nothing but uh, let me just uh, fix the view yeah so that i can uh, write this as uh, i omega n and we are going to discuss the significance of this omega n and this parameter so uh, we are going to do that but let us uh, first substitute our roots uh, uh, to the original uh, equation which is uh, u of t because it has now two roots i'm going to write my solution as a linear combination of k to the power lambda 1 2 which represents the solution with respect to the first root and then a to the power lambda 2 which is corresponding to the second root okay so uh, i will get here as and then b e to the power i omega n t if you remember from your complex numbers uh, uh, theory uh, what did you uh, had uh, if you have e to the power i x uh, you could write it as cos x plus i sin x remember and then e to the power i x uh, minus i x uh, can be written as cos x and minus sin x so if you make that substitution in this equation here and then again rearrange the term okay you will get something like a plus b cos omega nt plus okay let me just uh, fix it here i will get it as cos omega nt plus i a minus b sin nt and again these two uh, parameters can be represented as another constant uh, the values of which need to be determined to obtain a specific solution this equation so i'm going to represent as another constant like n and then d sine mega nt all right so i have obtained the solution to this uh, second order uh, homogeneous equation uh, linear homogeneous equation here now i have two unknown constant and that we are going to determine using the values of the uh, or the using the provided initial conditions okay so okay so uh, uh, let us substitute those values before that i need to differentiate it once to so obtain the uh, expression for uh, uh, u dot t so if i do that i will have as minus c omega n sorry this should be a uh, sin omega n t here plus t omega n cos omega n t all right so let us substitute these values so uh, u0 is equal to c and remember uh, at t equal to 0 cos omega n t is basically it would be 1 plus zero because sine of omega n t at t equal to zero would be zero so i have obtained my value of c as u of zero okay now u dot zero would be equal to this term again would be equal to zero plus i will have d omega n and then the value of cos omega t would be uh, one okay so that gives me the value of d as u dot zero okay if i substitute this to the uh, equation that i had that the expression that i had for ut i would get it as u of t is equal to u of 0 cos omega nt plus u dot of 0 sin omega nt all right so this is the uh, solution of uh, free vibration for the initial condition u of 0 and u dot of 0 
and you know of course depending upon whatever the uh, values of uh, u0 or u.0 you have you can uh, obtain the specific or like a numerical value of u of t okay so just means uh, just let me write it this is as free undamped vibration okay so as you can see uh, I have the expression for u of t and let us just uh, try to plot this function okay and see how does it look like so I have a cos function and then I have a sine function okay so if you plot it if you plot this uh, expression okay so what I have here this all right and then this is u of t and okay so i can uh, write it as so if you plot it here it would look like something like this okay uh, so what do i basically see here my resultant function is actually or the expression for ut is actually a harmonic function and also a periodic function which repeats itself okay it repeats after a specific time okay now if you look at uh, this graph here i know that whatever the initial displacement at time t equal to zero was u of zero okay and the slope initial slope of this ut is basically the velocity which i'm going to write it as a u dot of uh, zero okay now in this case uh, if you look at this or oh, let me just write it uh, like this take it from here so it has some kind of periodicity this function here okay and this uh, periodicity is actually if you saw this function or if you see the function here actually repeats itself after a or after 2 pi by omega n seconds okay and that you can uh, uh, you know prove by substituting or finding out the value of ut at time equal to t as well as t plus 2 pi by omega n t okay you can find that out from this and uh, you can you can prove that the values are still the same okay now this quantity here 2 pi by omega n and then all the time after which it repeats itself is ca uh, called the natural time period of the system okay so this is called natural time period of the system okay and remember that uh, the value of omega n that we have obtained is under root k by n so now the value of tn would become using this relationship here 2 pi under root m by k okay so as i said tn is called the natural uh, time period of the system okay and uh, omega n is actually called the natural circular frequency of vibration okay so it is called natural circular frequency of vibration okay and uh, as you can see from this relationship omega n is actually uh, related to tn uh, using this relationship here okay and the unit of omega n is actually a radian per second okay and then there is another parameter which is called the natural cyclic frequency of vibration okay and we represent it using f and it is called natural cyclic frequency of vibration okay
and the unit of uh, this uh, f is actually uh, first let me just write down the relationship between f and omega n uh, so they are related as you can see uh, f is basically first write me in terms of the time period is 1 by t okay so this is the cyclic frequency of vibration okay and it is also related to omega n using this relationship here and the unit of uh, f is actually uh, cycles many places you will see it is written as cycles per second or in uh, short uh, cps but uh, more commonly you will see that uh, hertz as being used as uh, the unit of the uh, natural cyclic frequency of vibration okay now we are uh, using the word natural quite a lot uh, so you just have to keep in mind the significance of the significance of the word natural is basically that this is uh, the natural uh, means that uh, it is without any action of external load and it is for an undamped system so these natural properties are so maybe i'll just write it here natural properties are defined for undamped system okay without action of external load okay now it is uh, very important to understand you know uh, the physical significance of these parameters and uh, what are the typical values uh, that you would uh, see for these uh, parameters okay now uh, time period as i said it is basically the time required to complete a single cycle of motion okay now if i have this graph here and if i had to represent it uh, let us say for a system the spring mass system that we have discussed okay right. so let me say this is uh, a this is b and i can take that for like you know for any uh, section of this uh, uh, vibration uh, cycle that i see here okay it would be c b and e okay so the motion is always considered about the equilibrium position okay and for many cases like the equilibrium position is also the initial position or the undefined position which is fine for example we considered when we considered the motion of a uh, hanging uh, the spring mass system uh, hanging from uh, in the vertical direction for that we said that let us consider the motion from uh, this position so the initial position was equilibrium okay and then what we do either we uh, impart an initial displacement or initial velocity okay or a combination of both okay so this starts from let us say a value of if i'm measuring you from the equilibrium okay starts from a value of u equal to whatever the initial uh, initial rate is provided so that would be let us say case a here okay then uh, what happens as u is increasing it attains a or goes to a maximum let's say in this case somewhere around here okay and this is the maximum uh, displacement of the system due to initial uh, velocity and uh, uh, displacement okay and this is the position b that is uh, shown here so this is position a this is position b okay so it will go to this maximum position and then it again it will start coming back to the equi initial equilibrium position okay all right so this would be again uh, c here okay and then it will go with the so when uh, it goes to a maximum value of the displacement right here okay u would be uh, maximum but the velocity would be uh, zero okay and that you can see from this uh, 
cycle here as it goes from a to b you can see that displacement is maximum however this curve is actually flat here which means that a slope of the uh, this expression is zero the slope is actually the velocity of this uh, spring mass system so the velocity is zero all right and then it starts coming back to its original position okay and then it passes to its or equilibrium position at which it displacement again becomes zero however it passes at the maximum velocity so at this point is what when is your velocity is maximum okay and that velocity carries this system in the opposite direction so the negative u direction as you can see here okay so i'm going to uh, represent that uh, uh, let me say here So this is the state D which correspond to the negative maximum okay and then again after it attains this negative maximum it start coming back to its uh, equilibrium position at which it completes a cycle of motion and this uh, you know this actually keeps on uh, repeating okay so you, uh, this is the basic like you know the breakdown of a free vibration of an undamped system okay now let us come back to these three parameters that we talked about the time period the circular frequency and then the uh, cyclic frequency okay and as i said that units would be second here it would be radian per second and here it would be hertz okay so uh, now what do you think if i have a two if i have two systems a system a and a system b okay now system a if i am saying to you that a system a has very high frequency okay very high frequency okay of course uh, you know this would be in comparison with uh, system b here what are the things you can deduce from this information that has been provided to you okay if it has high if it has a system is a high frequency compared to uh, system b there could be multiple possibilities one could be or like you know let us just uh, list down those possibility if the frequency is high remember that how is the frequency uh, how is the time period connected to the frequencies is time period is either 2 pi by omega n or it is also 1 by f so it is inversely proportional to the frequency so that means the time period would be small small here okay large t okay what other things you can deduce remember that my omega n is nothing but k by m so if the frequency is higher that means it could be a stiff system okay compared to a flexible system and i mean this makes sense isn't it if you consider a flexible system can you physically imagine that a flexible system would take more time to come back to its or like you know finish a cycle of motion compared to a stiff system okay a stiff system if you give initial displacement it vibrates at a very high frequency okay high frequency means that there are a lot of or there are like you know higher number of uh, cycles in a single second of motion which is basically consistent with its definition here 1 by f okay other possibility for the given scenario would be instead of saying stiff system or flexible system for a given same stiffness this could also be possible if the mass is small here okay so let us write down a small mass and then here it is large mass okay so these are the few of the possibilities uh, that Uh, might result in high frequency system a system a with a high frequency compared to a system with b with low frequency okay so uh, this you have to keep in mind if a system is stiff that means that it would have high frequency okay 
if a system has very large mass that means that it would have low uh, low frequency okay or i can also say that if a system have very large mass that means or a flexible system then it would have large time period of uh, oscillation compared to a system with a small mass and a stiff system all right okay once uh, that is there uh, let me come back to our expression for u of t again which uh, we had obtained as u of 0 cos omega n t plus u dot 0 omega n sin omega of n t and remember that we said that omega n t i can write this as 2 by, by t so i can also write this expression as And then I can write this as similarly 2 pi by t by tn. Okay, now uh, remember that we know from this graph, okay, what is u0, what is u dot 0. Uh, we have also find out what is the time period of uh, vibration or the oscillation. Okay, there is one more thing that is remaining to find out, remaining to be found out, and that is the amplitude of the oscillation here. Okay, let us represent this using u naught. Okay, so amplitude would be basically whatever the maximum values value of this uh, expression that uh, I have here. Okay, so I need to find out maximum value of u t. Okay, let us see how do we uh, get that. Uh, if you consider any function of type a cos, let's say a cos uh, theta plus b sin theta, if you remember your trigonometric identities, what I can do here, let me uh, multiply and uh, put this case here. I will multiply and divide by this okay so under square root of a square plus b square okay and if you look at this carefully if i consider tan alpha equal to b by a then this expression is nothing but sine of an alpha and this expression is nothing but cos of alpha okay where tan alpha as i said is b by a so i can write this further as under root a square plus b square and this would become cos theta into cos alpha plus sin theta into sin alpha and from your trigonometric identities i can write this as cos of theta minus alpha okay and that we can like you know substitute it back here so in this case remember my a is u of 0 b is u dot of 0 so i can write this whole expression as u of 0 and cos of theta minus let us say i represent this uh, instead of i'll say this as phi okay now i know that maximum value of cos function is actually plus 1 so that the maximum value of ut would be let me write it as u naught with this okay so the free vibration with initial displacement and velocity happens around this static equilibrium position with an amplitude which is represented by this here okay all right once that is clear okay let us see how do we find out the important dynamic properties of the system okay till now we were deriving our equation of motion as mu double dot plus cu dot plus ku equal to p of t 
we said that for a free vibration this equal to 0 for an undamped free vibration this equal to 0 okay so a simple problem on this would be a system an undamped system would be given to you okay and you could be asked to find out what is the value of omega n which you'll have to find as k by n remember that there are multiple ways to obtain the equation of motion in terms of different degrees of freedom as well okay however whatever you do the omega n should be same because remember omega n depends on the stiffness and the mass of the system it does not depend on the applied load so it is a property of a system okay it does not depend on the applied load so that you have to keep in mind okay so uh, once i write this expression omega n equal to under root uh, uh, k by n you can obtain the equation of motion differently with different coefficients okay point is what i'm trying to make here is whatever the way you obtain your equation of motion your omega n uh, should be in the simplest form coefficient of the stiffness term or stiffness force okay so basically here okay, divided by m which would be the again coefficient of instead of saying the stiffness force let me just write it as coefficient of the displacement okay. the second term i can write it as coefficients of the acceleration all right so using this i should be able to obtain my omega n which is of okay as i said it's in right radian per second okay and then i can find out the time period of the system as well as the frequency of the system okay all right i hope up to this point it is clear to you okay now what we are going to do we are going to uh, do an example okay and this is not a problem for a book what we are going to do we are going to uh, take typical properties of the values of a system of a building let us say with a column and like you know beam and then see what is the value of uh, the time period that we get okay so let us say a typical single story building is what do you think is the typical size of a room would be it might be let us say 10 feet by 10 feet of course if you live in mumbai then it might even be smaller isn't it okay anyway so let us say i have this and i want to find out the time period of the lateral motion okay uh, there was a problem remember in which we had considered torsional motion but right now we want to consider only the lateral uh, 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 time period of the system okay uh, so let us say you know i mean there are uh, four columns a typical column could be 300 mm by 300 mm and there are four of those remember e of concrete let us say it is 25 mpa concrete okay so let us say it is 25 mpa concrete uh, column remember that e is nothing but 5000 times under root fck okay so i would get as es 2500 okay 2500 mpa okay and if i consider uh, these uh, not to be actually let me just again write it or let us just say this is the fixed fixed connection although in reality it is not like like you know always fixed fit uh, like you know many times it would be pain because to like you know provide fixity we need to do additional detailing and like you know provide uh, rigid uh, support to the ground okay but anyway just for the sake of this calculation let us assume it's a fixed fit connection okay so remember that what was our stiffness in that case was 12 ei by 
L cube. Okay, and a typical story height you can assume as let us say 3.5 meter. Okay, so if I substitute it here, I will get as 12 times E, which is 2500 MPa. Okay, and this I can write in 1 MPa. Remember, 1 MPa is nothing but 10 to the power 6 Newton per meter square. And what would be I of a section? Okay, so if I have a section like this BD, remember uh, if it is bending about uh, this axis, then it would be I would be BD cube by 12. In this case, both are same, the square cross section. So I can, it would be just uh, 0.3 to the power 4 divided by 12. That is my EI and the length is 3.5 into the power cube. Okay, and this uh, need to be found out. So uh, you can calculate this value. Okay, let us uh, see uh, what do we get uh, when we calculate that. Okay, so okay. so I get it as 4.7230. Okay, and that would be let us say Newton per meter. Now, in terms of mass, what I could do, I could lump all the masses here. Okay, so half of the mass of all this, and remember this is for one column. Sorry, so what I need to do is uh, use four times, which I let us say I'll do in the final calculation. Let us first talk about the mass. Mass you can lump it uh, at the roof level by assuming that half of the mass of this these columns are lumped to the uh, roof slab here okay and then uh, uh, the dead weight of the roof slab you can add it to that okay and then you can also add the live load okay and all those would come contribute to the total mass of this uh, system okay so for the mass of the system let us say I have four column and I would assume that half of this is actually lumped okay now remember that cross section area is 0 0.3 by 0 0.3 and then i would have to multiply this with 2400 which i'm assuming is the density of the concrete okay this is for the column for the slab let me assume like you know typical uh, slab of uh, 250 mm okay so in that case uh, the total uh, would be uh, remember that uh, uh, the slab uh, dimensions I can assume this has to be 4 meter by 4 meter okay so it would be 0 0.25 the thickness of slab times 4 times 4 and then again 2400 so this is basically the dead weight okay but in reality there are other type of things as well for example floor finishing is there there might be like you know other things that are installed on top of it because I don't have information regarding that, I'm going to neglect that. However, what I'm going to do, I'm going to assume a live load to this slab here, okay, which I would assume as a live load acting as T Newton per meter square, okay, which is very typical. So I will write it as T Newton per meter square times the area which I have here is. And uh, remember that uh, I need to convert this to into mass unit system here. Okay, so this is Newton. So to convert it to kg, I will multiply this with 9.8. Okay, so let us see how much I get. 4. Okay, so I'm getting as. Kgs. Okay. So let us say if I use this, what do I get as time period? P. This is the mass. And then I have four of these, four of this column here. Okay, so I get it approximately as 0 0.5 second. And as you like, you know, do more and prob more problems and uh, calculate the time period, you would see that uh, 0.5 second is very typical of like you know uh, low to medium rise building. 
as the uh, height of the building increases the time period would actually increase but using these typical values we have obtained the time period to be approximately 0.5 second okay so uh, depending upon what kind of a structure it is i will give you some typical values of the time period of different type of uh, structure okay so you know buildings depending upon uh, whether it is a low and like you know low rise building or a high rise building it could be uh, between let us say 0.4 to 1.5 second actually for a high rise building uh, if it's a very stiff structure like nuclear power plant or something like that okay then it's a very stiff structure so the time period would be very small it is around 0.2 seconds okay you get typical uh, values between 0.2 to 0.3 second or you could have very flexible structure like a suspension bridge okay and which could have like you know depending upon which direction you are considering time period even like you know 7 to 8 second in one direction or like you know 3 to 4 seconds so uh, depending upon the direction you could have like you know different time periods which are like of uh, uh, typical values like you know varying around 6 7 second or 3 4 uh, second so uh, you know it's a good practice to keep the values these values in mind uh, to reflect like you know what are the typical values of different type of systems uh, for their time period and frequencies just to get a feel of the uh, these numbers and these parameters all right so with this uh, i would uh, like to conclude uh, the lecture today thank you very